Hey everybody and welcome. In today's video, we're going to see how to create a blueprint of an already existing model. Now, this was a question posed on one of the subscribers and I want to show you how to do this uh, really simple and easy. Uh, his question was basically for a more complex model, but since I don't have uh, the exact model that he was using, I'm going to try to show this thing on the model that we already did a couple of videos on, so you can uh, recognize this model uh, if you've seen uh, any of the previous videos. If you want to see how to create this, check out the video where we created it. But for this video, we're only going to focus on how to take an already existing model that you've already created and make blueprints for it. So. In order to make those blueprints, we need to have uh, orthographic renderings of the said model. And generally what you would require is going to be a frontal, a side, a back and a top render. So let's see how to do this. Now, what, the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna go to create, create a V-Ray camera, physical camera, click over here in the front and that is going to create a physical camera draw it back a bit and let's see how it looks all right good turn it back just a bit there we go okay awesome so if i open up my rendering queue and just turn on the real-time rendering i'm going to see that i actually can see the background so in order to fix that what I'm going to do is just on my light turn off or make it invisible. This way it's casting light, but it's actually uh, not going to be uh, seen into our background. So if I re-render now, there we go. So we have this chair, which is a frontal view, but there is a problem. Namely, uh, in here we have a dis perspective distortion coming from the camera. And that is no good if you're going to try and actually do this thing as a uh, blueprint. So what you want to do is, uh, first of all, open up your settings or press just F10. Now, in your V-Ray settings, scroll all the way down to camera. And now here you should see it uh, as default. What you do is you go ahead and you switch this thing to orthographic. Now, right away, as you've done that, if you go ahead and restart the interactive rendering, you will notice that we've gotten rid of all of that perspective distortion. And now we have this thing uh, rendering as an orthographic view, which is exactly what we want for now. So before I actually go on uh, and do any more renderings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just create one standard V-Ray material, which is called gray. And I'm going to apply it to the chair. There we go. All right, let the rendering start. All right, so we have a good starting point. But now the other problem that uh, we're going to be met with is that generally when you're creating blueprints for, a mo for further modeling, you want to have some sort of a way that you can emphasize where certain uh, elements are or certain places where this for example like over here where the legs meet the wooden part and the uh, metallic part uh, you have the intersection for those parts so we need a way to emphasize that intersection the easiest way to do this is if you press 8 this will open up the environment and effects in here in atmosphere you have effects so click on add and choose the V-Ray Tune shader. Now, this shader will basically tunify or uh, cartoonize your model. So if I let the uh, real-time rendering start, you're gonna notice that now over here, I can see this uh, black line, I can see it over here, in here, and pretty much anywhere where there is going to be a sharp border between the geometry, you will see that line. You can actually see it over down here as well. Uh, we can control how thick that uh, line is by just controlling how many pixels there is. So at the default settings is uh, one and a half. If we put three, 
this will make them uh, thicker it's going to be easier to see or read later on in our blueprint so i'm going to leave it at three close it and stop the uh, rendering so i'm actually going to uh, do a proper render it's going to be fast because there isn't really uh, that much to do so it's finished now what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this let's name this front and make it a png now the reason why we're making it as a png is because we want to pack it in with the alpha so click on save click ok all right we have the frontal one now i'm going to do is select my model rotate it around and it's not really important where it's at as long as it's uh in our bounding box so I'm going to hit render one more time. That is going to take a few seconds. And we can actually see those black lines even better here, which is good. Now, again, click on save. Let's call this side. Change it again to PNG. Save. Okay. And last, I just want to uh, rotate this thing around 90. And I'm going to move it upwards so we can see the whole thing and render awesome now what you're going to notice is that the difference between what i'm seeing in my screen here and what we're getting in the render is quite different and again that is because the camera sees with the perspective distortion while our rendering is going with the orthographic view so let's go top png and save all right, so by doing this, we actually have the three viewports or the three views that we need already done. So now, next thing what I want to do is I would open up Google and just type in blueprint texture. Or pretty much if you have a texture that's an empty texture, you can use that one. In my case, since I want to do it uh, the quicker way, I can just choose any of these. But as long as it's it's a bigger resolution, that's going to work out just fine. Let's try to find something bigger. Oh, these are very small. All right. Okay, here's a nice one. So uh, 2560 by 1600. So we can just uh, copy the image and we can open it up in Photoshop. So let's do that. Once inside Photoshop, now what we want to do is we want to take our images that we just rendered out and draw them in here. There we go. So now I'm going to hold down shift when I'm dragging this thing. And by holding it here is going to drop it in our space here. There we go. One, two, and three. All right. So I have these three in here. Let me hide them. And the first thing I want to do over here now is I want to change how this thing looks. So what I'm going to do is go filter, stylize, and find edges. Now, as you can see, this is helping me even further with how my edges look like. And it's giving me even more extra lines that I can follow along. But at the moment, it's just simply way too wide. So let's just control shift alt and B and just put it to black and white and click OK. In this case, nothing much changed. But now if I go in here and from my blending modes, I choose screen or I can go even uh, lower down to overlay or soft light depending on how one this thing to look so if i want this thing to be a more transparent look i would go with soft light but actually for this one i'm going to choose screen and move it to the side there we go now open up the second one do the same thing for it go to uh, stylize find edges and since this is already white, I don't have to make it white again. Otherwise, if this actually did have any render uh, details, what you would do is just, again, Control, Shift, Alt, and B and make it black and white. So by just doing it like this, if I go to screen again, move it to the side. And the last one is going to be the same. Filter. 
stylize, find edges, and screen. All right, so we have uh, these uh, three that are ready to be used. And actually, when you're doing something like this, it's always a nice idea to have one more stylized look that is going to be used as just a way to showcase it. So let's really quickly jump back into uh, 3ds Max. And from here, what I'm going to do is just quickly render out one more viewport or one more view. And for this one, I'm just going to uh, quickly render out there you go, something like this. But also remember to turn off the orthographic option over here. So I'm going to go back to default and just hit one render. There we go. This is going to give me a nice image that I can use for my uh, last uh, quadrant over there. So let's hit save and call this perspective. PNG, save, all right, do the same thing over here, just drag in the perspective, all right, and now for this one, again, filter, stylize, find edges, all right, let's try it for this one, let's see, okay, and put it over to screen. All right. So now we just put these guys around and we have our base for the blueprint. Now from here, you can take any route you want. Namely, you can put any information that might be actually important for this model. And it's uh, very simple. You can just uh, go in here and maybe start off with maybe the the sizes for each uh, of these uh, elements or you might actually want to put in some uh, details or the name or pretty much anything that might be pertinent for this uh, blueprint but also there is another way that you can do this namely when you're inside 3ds max what you can do over here for example if you want to have the quotas is you can always uh, draw some lines on shift uh, draw a line like that now you make sure it's enabled in uh, viewport and renderer especially in rendering so you can actually see this thing and again just like we did it in Photoshop you can use the text and maybe just drop in the same 125 or whatever this size is and depending on what you want to choose maybe get another line like this another number let's make this thing at least smaller so it makes some sense so 60 there we go something like this so now when you start the rendering and you hit the rendering you're actually going to see those numbers come in so you can use them in the blueprint but again i'm think thinking that this would be the more complex way because this would be so much easier to do in Photoshop. Plus, once you have the actual uh, numbers, just hold down Alt and you can drag that thing. Uh, so it will be used for the other ones as well, as you can see over here. So that pretty much covers on how to make blueprints. I will leave it up to you to decide what you want to uh, use as uh, a background or what sort of information you would like to provide with your model. With this model, it doesn't really make too much sense to add anything other than the actual numbers. But for the model in the actual question, which was a mechanical model, it will make more sense to put in some more details about how it works. So I hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new from this video. If you would like to support me, you can click the join button and direct links will be in the description below. And the most helpful thing you can do is just click the like and subscribe buttons and comment below in the video. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.